Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I am once again taking you behind the scenes during an actual wedding that I shot and show you how I lit and photographed these images. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to do so because I am still giving away a beautiful backdrop from Kate Backdrop. This is a 1.5 meter by 2 meter collapsible non-reflective dual sided backdrop and the best thing about this giveaway is that I will make the winner choose the specific design that they want. And to join is very simple, all you have to do is follow the mechanics in the description below. So with that out of the way, as I said in my intro, I am taking you behind the scenes during an actual wedding that I shot. This actually takes place in what we call the couple's portrait. In other words, this is right after the wedding reception or the wedding ceremony and right before the reception. So there are two videos that I will be sharing with you today. One was shot outdoor and the other one was shot indoor. So the outdoor scene will basically show you how I was able to shoot in lackluster conditions. In other words, the light wasn't really that nice or the existing ambient light. And the second layout is basically answering the question of a lot of photographers, which is how do we shoot our couple in an empty ballroom, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy the videos. Okay, so in this layout, we have this tiny island here that I think they really built so that we can shoot uh, a couple looking over the pond. So I'll be shooting them here. <laughs> so again, uh, we lost a lot of the light already. So basically what we're going to try to do is create natural sunlight. So I have again my, my Ma Profoto B2S here with a Magmod Magbox. And then we'll see what this one will do. Again, I'm going to be shooting this in shutter speed priority. I'm going to stay within my flash sping speed, which is 1 over 250. And I'm getting about f5.6. So I hope this, this flash is strong enough to be able to create the light that I want. Is it possible to have the light from there? No, it's okay. Try it first. There, here. Right here. Right here. Yes, yes. That's enough. Then... Can you move here a little, Risa? Some more, some more. Yeah, then lean forward. Okay, Jeffrey from behind. Just looking at the fish, having fun. Oh, but of course you guys gotta be sweeter, so you gotta be closer. Not, but facing here, facing here this time. You can hold hands and just face there. Let me do a test shot first. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Okay, the flash is strong enough, okay. So since the flash is strong enough, we focus now on the post. I'll underexpose the scene by one stop. Okay guys, um, maybe Jeffrey you could put your arm around Risa. There, so that you're closer. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah, oh then... Then, okay, I know. Jeffrey, put your hand here. Risa, put your hand inside there. Then you'll be the one to go closer to Jeffrey. All right, then you put your hand on the on his on his arm like this. Put your head on his arm. But leaning forward, both of you leaning forward. It's like you know when you want Jeffrey to buy you a bag. <laughs> right? I haven't tried. I'll do that. You should try that. So you take his arm there and go, "Babe, can you buy me this one?" That's the feeling that I want you to feel right now, okay? All right. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, on the count. 1 2 Beautiful. Um, Mark, can you put the, put the modifier and just going closer? I might actually get a good reflection from here, so I'm going to try to shoot it. By, adding a, by underexposing a scene, then adding a light on them, we should be able to get a decent reflection. Okay, Mark, can I have it here? Right here. So can you lean forward a bit, Jeffrey? Jeffrey, put your... go down. There, there, perfect, that's it. Then Risa now, perfect. Risa, get into a better position. When your hand there, you hook it. There, then you, with your other hand, you hold it all. There, that's perfect. Okay, I love that. Let's do a test shot. There, I'm getting the reflection. So now we're just gonna tweak the power. Beautiful, okay. All right, tweak the power and the pose. Beautiful. Guys, lean forward a little bit more. Can we have the light higher? All right, Risa, that's perfect. That's perfect. I love that. Okay. And that is how quick 
we do our couple portraits. A lot of people have been asking me how we do our empty ballroom shots. Basically, this is how we do it. Um, unfortunately, today, it would have been better if we were able to shoot at a later time. Um, but since the ballroom will be open in about 15 minutes and we've still got a lot of sunlight, um, we can't really do anything about it but make the most out of it. So what I plan to do is I'm going to underexpose the scene and I put them in an area with the least amount of sunlight that I can control and still bring in, bring in all these angel lights. I have here now my F45RM together with the MagMod MagSphere and MagGrid and MagGel. I need the MagGel, this is a half CTO, so that I can match the color to my existing ambient light. I want the grid there so that I can focus my light, but I want the sphere to make it softer. Okay, so we're gonna put it here. What I'm gonna be using is my WRC1M. And the camera is a A7R Mark IV with a 16 to 35 lens. So we're composing it like this. We're gonna use this one as a foreground. Maybe, you know what? Can you get the, can we, can we get some of the table arrangements and put it together? Can you get um, those flowers, put it here, and those flowers, put it here, just the flowers? So it's only at 1 over 80 f2.8. So therefore, there we go. Okay. This is gonna be about 16, 1 over 16. All right, give me some more of your back. Some more of your back. There, that's it, that's it. That's it, I like that. Um, Jeffrey, can you move one step back? Perfect, then move here. There, too much, go back. Good. And then your left shoulder towards Risa. Good, even your foot. Nice, nice. Very nice, oh, very nice. This would have been better if it was darker, but we gotta play around with what we have now. Okay, very nice. So I shifted cameras so that I can bring in my 1.4 because this perspective is actually very nice. <laughs> there, very nice. Then how about a kiss shot for the both of you? Can you take out the can you take out the bouquet again? And then Jeffrey move here. Some more, some more, some more. And then use your left hand again to her chin. There, good. And then hold on to her, to his wrist, Risa. Hold on to the wrist, yeah, then going closer, going closer, there. There, very nice. Wow. Very nice. All right, beautiful. Okay, good. So I hope you guys enjoyed those two videos that you just saw and let's do a recap. Basically in the first layout, I was shooting in very lackluster conditions. So I had to bring in my light to serve as an artificial sun. Now, when I do that, I usually get a little bit of contrast, a lot of light separation from foreground and background. And that for me is the one that creates depth in an image. Also, when you do artificial lighting, you try to boost whatever color that's in existence in that specific situation. Because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if there is beautiful light, you are also getting beautiful colors. If the light is substandard, even the colors will be flat. So that's what I try to do with that specific layout. Now in the second layout, which was inside the ballroom, as I said in the video, how I wish I could have shot later on in the evening. But again, those are the things that I don't like doing. I don't like making excuses of what I could have done, but rather I showed you what I could do given that particular situation. Now looking back and looking at those images and that video, I should have taken more time to remove a lot of the distractions in the back. But again, when you're shooting a wedding, you have about 15, 20 minutes to shoot the couple. Basically, what you can get from that particular situation is what you take home. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, so till the next video.